So if you're printing with materials like PETG, TPU, nylon, or similar materials that are very prone to soaking up the humidity from the surrounding air, you need to keep those filaments in dry bags. Basically, this is a vacuum bag, but any kind of storage solution to keep away the humidity getting into the material. But what about when you are printing? How can you keep the filament dry while you are using it? And that's why we are building a filament dry box. This is just an IKEA Sammler box. It's 22 liters, but you can use any kind of plastic box that fits a few spools of filament. It doesn't have a sealed lid. There's boxes with sealed lids, but they are much more expensive. We're going to do a little workaround for that. And also we have all the 3D printed parts here, a few six or eight bearings so the filaments can roll nicely. And then a temperature and humidity sensor and some silica gel to keep everything dry in that box. So I've put a complete list of all the ingredients and also the 3D printed parts in the description of this video so you can check out what is needed. And now let's get into a build. So let's start with making the box a sealed compartment. So as I told you, this box does have a lid, but it's not sealed. So there's no rubber gasket going around the edges, but there's a solution for this. So you can get basically the cheapest foam sealing for windows or doors that you can find. So this is self-adhesive, so you can just glue it into the corners of this lid. I've already prepared this. This is already done here, so I've glued it in here nicely. And then when I close it, it is pretty much sealed. Of course, we need some solution to keep that box closed. So IKEA sells some clips for this box. I didn't buy those clips. I've printed some clips from PETG and they are going to work nicely to close this box, but we're not doing that yet. We just have to do some work on the inside. The next step to do is to look at how are the filament spools going to be stored in that box. I found different solutions how to store the filament in the IKEA box. There is solutions that just simply use a metal rod that's running from edge to edge and then the filament spools are sitting on that rod. The disadvantage of these solutions is that you always have to take out everything if you just want to replace one spool. That's why I went for another solution that I think is much more elegant using three individual spool rollers, uh, using some uh, 3D printed parts and some 608 bearings. And the spool is just going to sit on this roller and then it can roll individually from each other. And you can also combine these three individual rollers into one part basically by just connecting them using a few screws. We need actually 12 608 bearings and then we need these three printed rods where the filament spools are running on, but these are only half rods, so to say. So we put together two of these sides and then we have a new complete rod. And then each side gets inserted into a 608 bearing. And this requires a little bit of force. That's why I'm using a plastic hammer just to get it in more easily. So the next step is to insert all these rollers into their places. So they just click into place. And then when this is done, we can connect the individual spool holders. That looks pretty nice and it's a tight fit. So three spools will fit in the box. There's bigger boxes also where you can probably fit in more spools. I chose to go for three spools. So there's tons of different solutions how to feed the filament from the inside to the outside. I've chosen to go with another solution that also contains a filament dust filter. And that is quite elegant because you can still use a PTFE tube on this side. This is the outer part. And this is the inner side. And then he, we have here another compartment that opens up from the side. And here's our foam that's gonna be our dust filter. So I'm going for that because that's a combination of having an outlet and a dust filter in one piece. So to get this into the box, we need to drill three holes and then just screw this in place. By the way, since you're learning something today, I want to mention our today's sponsor, Skillshare. 
Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people just like you and me. Exploring new skills, deepening existing passions and simply getting lost in creativity is very easy with Skillshare. I've been struggling lately with finding ways to structure my day and being more productive because you can imagine having a full-time day job and running a YouTube channel is quite time consuming. So I figured Thomas Frank has great courses about productivity, which I'm currently working through to improve my skills and structure my work better. Skillshare's content is created specifically for learning, there is no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused. The first 1000 of you to use the link in the description, you can get a free trial membership of Skillshare and see if it's for you. And with that, back to the video. Now, finally, depending where you want the temperature and humidity sensor to be mounted, you have to decide whether you're gonna drill a hole on one of the sides of the box or if you're going to do this for the lid of the box. So this sensor needs a drilling hole of about 40 to 41 millimeters. So that's quite huge and probably not everyone will have that kind of a drill at home but I'm using a specialized drill for this. This is normally used for drilling holes into drywalls. I hope this is also going to work with the plastic box. Let's see how this turns out. So next we are filling in the orange silica pearls. I'm just keeping them at the bottom and they are supposed to be orange when they are completely dry and they will turn greenish and completely green when they are wet. So when the humidity is at 100%, which is probably never going to happen. And then we're putting the spool rollers just on top and that should be fine. Now we can put in the filament spools and close this box. So I've got some PETG here that I'd like to use. And the second spool is gonna be a TPU, which is also very prone to soak up humidity from the air. I um, want to keep that always in the dry box. And number three is going to be some Ninja Flex TPU, which is also very delicate and needs to be kept dry all the time. So you see PETG and TPU are going to be my main concerns uh, regarding this dry box. So it's pretty much time to close this box. Um, I figured that there's a little bit of resistance when pulling out the filament. I'm a little bit concerned about that. Probably I need to try whether feeding the filament from the top or from the bottom is better. But in general, I think this solution will work. Um, probably needs a little bit of tinkering, but that's why we're here. And also trying out different kinds of outlets um, with different resistance. Um, the, so this filament, Dust filter definitely creates a little more resistance than probably some simpler uh, outlet that just uses a PTFE coupling. So trying out these different things, I think it's worth it depending on what you really, really want. But this is a really nice solution for keeping filament dry. So let's close it. So have a look at the final product. This looks really nice. Everything is enclosed. The lid should be sealed pretty well. So the humidity inside currently seems to be 45%, but I expect this to go down over time. I'm gonna let this sit for a few hours and see where the value settles in. And that's it for today about building a filament dry box. Check out the links in the description. There's plenty of different solutions. So if you like this video, probably wanna check out a few other videos that I've made. I've linked two up here for you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.